Hey guys, it's Gail Banks coming to you from Dino Cell number two, and this is Killing a Duramax, part three. Well, what we're gonna look at today is why this turbo is out to lunch. We've got instrumentation to look at the compressor and where it is in its capabilities. So we're measuring temperature and pressure in and out of the compressor. And then on the turbine side, we're also measuring temperature and pressure into and out of the turbine. So we can look at the efficiency, if you will, of the compressor, but my focus is on the turbine because as we've been running here, we've been seeing turbine inlet pressure or drive pressure kind of going to the moon. And, and you've got to look at the ratio or the difference between the boost pressure coming out of the compressor and the turbine inlet pressure or drive pressure driving the turbine. When they're the same, that, that's what we call the crossover point. When the turbine drive pressure is higher than the boost outlet pressure from the compressor, you've got negative situation going on here. You're corking up, getting the heat and the exhaust energy out. The turbine is in choke. Not a good thing to do. It's really hard on power output. It keeps heat in the cylinders. It keeps pressure in the cylinders, so you're pumping the pistons against the pressure or back pressure of the turbine during the exhaust stroke. That takes power out of the crankshaft that you put in with the compressor. Sound upside down? It is upside down. Size of the exhaust pipe is another thing I'm kind of curious about. Currently, we've got a four inch setup here. So could it be better if it were five? I don't know, we're gonna have a look. But today we're going to talk about this thing's upside down. It's out to lunch. The turbine drive pressure, what is it? What's the boost? What's the RPM of the turbo? That's the last thing. You know, a lot of guys tune the living snot out of these diesel engines and they don't have any instrumentation to tell them what's up. How close am I to totally killing the engine? That's why years ago I decided I had to have a way of measuring that, that I could put in the vehicle, that I could put in the dyno room, that I could use anywhere. That was the birth of the, what we call the I dash data monster. It doesn't care diesel, gasoline. It's a comprehensive powertrain development instrument. So let's go in the control room. We're gonna fire up the engine and I'm gonna teach you some things. All right, let's crank this thing up. See what we've got here. Now this thing has a variable geometry turbocharger and uh, we're indicating the vane position inside the variable geometry turbocharger and I'm gonna to talk to you about what that does as the engine's running, but it occurs to me I need to show you what I mean when I'm saying variable geometry turbocharger. So let's go out and take a look at one. So we're out here in the shop and I kind of broke apart this variable geometry Borg Warner turbocharger. This is the L5P turbo that's on the engine right now. There's a controller that controls what, what's called variable geometry inside the turbine housing. Most of you have never seen the insides of one of these things, but this is the most complex version, let's say, of a turbocharger, the, v, the VG guys, the variable geometry setups. The, what this does is it has an actuator, it's motor driven, uh, and it moves pieces inside the turbine housing the little veins that increase the velocity of the, the exhaust flow hitting the turbine wheel. 
So at low speeds, these veins can be actuated and now it vectors the exhaust flow onto the turbine wheel like turning down the nozzle on your garden hose. You've got kind of lower flow, but you've optimized it. Now that stream is hitting with more impact if, it, if you shoot it against a wall. Well, the wall in this case is the outer perimeter of the turbine wheel. The exhaust gas flows into the turbine wheel, does its work, and flows out to, the, your, to your exhaust system. This is full open. This is full closed. At low speeds, where you have low exhaust flow available, this allows you to have better turbocharger response, minimal turbo lag. That's what it's all about. It also ha helps you control the speed and the airflow for emissions purposes. This device makes your truck much more drivable and much more responsive to the throttle, but it has an evil backstory, and that is it increases the pressure into the turbine or the back pressure acting on the pistons on the exhaust stroke. As you close this and get better speed, you increase the pressure called drive pressure into the turbine inlet. That's really negative. Okay, you just saw the geometry moving out on the bench. Let's watch it move right here on the instrument. We're at a light load. We're at about 780 RPM. The vein position is about 5%. The veins will close under acceleration to kick the turbo in the ass and get the shaft speed up. So Aaron, let's just give it a throttle bang and watch the vein position then just gradually pull it back. So there you go, 90%. Did you see that, guys? So now he's pulling it back, holding around 2,500 RPM. So you saw that blip. Let's just punch it one more time. There, it did it again, went to 70. So whenever you ask for turbocharger, instantaneously those veins move. I mean, it is rapid. That Borg Warner controller is the bomb. That thing really works well. Let's take this thing up to 500 pound feet at 1500 RPM. And what we'll watch, uh, this instrument specifically is what we're watching right now. Uh, we're going to compare the turbine inlet pressure or drive pressure to the compressor outlet pressure. In other words, those two comparisons, and we do that in pounds per square inch absolute, so the numbers are from a perfect vacuum. I don't do negative pressure. You know, all pressure is positive, so I use absolute. So the two numbers we're comparing uh, are well above the 14.7 standard day atmospheric pressure, 14.7 pounds per square inch. We're at 500, uh, it's looking good, 1500. Turbocharger speed is around 65,000 RPM. Our red line on this puff is around 132. We've bumped into that red line already and kind of poked through it a couple of times. We're gonna to try to stay away from that here. Our turbine inlet pressure, here we're pulling like 145 horsepower, 500 pound feet, 1500 RPM. Turbine inlet pressure is 22 and a half and the turbine outlet, uh, compressor outlet pressure is 23.6. So the compressor out is higher than the turbine inlet pressure. That's positive. When the two are equal, we call it crossover. When the compressor outlet pressure is higher than the turbine drive pressure, that's a positive value. And we're showing it to you here in PSI. Right now, we're about 1.4 nominally pounds more out compressor outlet pressure. So this thing's really sweet. Turbine inlet temperature, 948 degrees, that's your EGT. The vein position is 44, roughly 44% closed. It bounces around a little because it's constantly adjusting. And the mass airflow into the engine is 
uh, call it eight, 15.8 pounds per minute of air going in. What's our air fuel ratio right now? About 24. Okay, 24 to one air fuel. This is compressor pressure ratio, and this is compressor density ratio. The density ratio is what matters here. The pressure ratio is something you see on a compressor map, but what really matters is the density ratio. Notice the density ratio is lower than the, the, than the pressure ratio. Why is that? Well, it's lower because while you're increasing pressure, you're also heating the air. And that's negative. That re reduces density. That's another reason why a boost gauge is absolutely Stone Age. Then we've got the compressor inlet density and the compressor outlet density. And we've got the density gain in percent across the compressor. So the compressor is improving the density at the, from the inlet to the outlet by about 34%. Same thing here in pounds. When we're talking about tuning the engine, we're mixing pounds of air with pounds of fuel. So I'm gonna give you what the compressor is doing in increasing the pounds of air per thousand cubic feet. The inlet is around 70.7 pounds per thousand. The outlet is about 95.9 pounds per thousand. So your density gain in mass is 24, 24 and a half pounds per thousand. This is real comfortable. This thing could run till the end of time at this load. So what I'd like to do is go on up to 2,000, give me 750 pound feet. Let's watch that vein position now, guys. It had to close the veins to get the density needed to make the power. And at 24 to 1, that's one pound of air, uh, pardon me, one pound of fuel for every 24 pounds of air. So here we are around 750. Our horsepower is now up around 290. We're at 2,000 RPM. Up to 87,000 on the, on the shaft speed. Look what's happened to the vein position. The veins are almost completely open. We've only got a few percent closed right now. Turbine inlet pressure is still pretty sweet. This turbocharger, the guys at GM, and probably with a little help from the guys at Borg Warner, I'm sure they teamed up on this turbocharger. This is a sweet turbo match. Here we are in the mid-range, we're at 2,000 RPM. This is pulling a grade with the trailer right now, just to, you know, holding the moderate speed. So our turbine inlet pressure is 27 pounds absolute, but our outlet's around 33 on the compressor. So we have a positive crossover situation of almost six pounds. Let's do a little something. Let's take this to 2,500 RPM, still 750 pounds. This is going to be interesting. All right. Now we're over 100,000 RPM in the turbocharger. And the turbine inlet pressure and the compressor outlet pressure almost match. Our drive pressure into the turbine is up almost a pound. Vein position is about zero, and our EGT is about 1090. Everything's safe here. The manifold airflow is about 45, 46 pounds per minute. So let's go to 3,750 pound feet. We'll kind of look at that drive pressure versus compressor discharge pressure and see how it is. I think we're going to come out here very close to the factory power rating, which is 445. There's 100,000 RPM on the turbocharger. We're still comfortable. And we're coming up to 750 on the torque. Okay, 107,000 RPM right now. We're about almost 10 pounds negative. Uh, turbine in, uh, drive pressure versus compressor out pressure. It's still usable. It's nice. The 
turbine inlet temperature, 1180 degrees Fahrenheit, main position's wide open, everything's happy here. Uh, we're making about 65 pounds uh, of air per minute. Uh, compressor improvement and our mass flow is about 55 so now I would like to squeeze the geometry down and go for five something let's see what happens we've got to squeeze the geometry down to get the shaft speed up and get some more boost pressure going on okay we got about 23 percent closed on the main position he just manually tuned that you really don't want to do this at wide open throttle, but if you're a tun tuner, you don't even know you're doing it. This is how these guys kill these things. There's your 132,000 RPM. We're right at the limit, about 530 horsepower, but we're 20 pounds upside down. Turbine drive pressure to compressor out pressure. What's our air fuel ratio right now? So we've gotten rich. We're making more power. But our mass flow, compressor mass flow, doesn't seem to have improved that much. This, the, this is running on kill. You've got more boost, but everything else is completely wrong, including the temperature of the compressor itself. We will look at that stuff next time. So we're at the limit on, on compressor shaft speed. We're upside down. The turbine drive pressure is way the hell up there compared to the, boot, the, the compressor outlet pressure. And we have to close the veins to, to get this thing to happen. That's holding heat in the engine. It's holding pressure against the pistons on the exhaust stroke. It, it's pulling power out of the crankshaft to support all this upside down situation with the turbo. This is what I wanted you to see. The turbo is out to lunch. It's over. Time to think about more turbocharger. Hey, what's with the coolant flow? You know what? I think we need to look at coolant flow, temperature gain across the engine, coolant. Something's whack there. That number should be much higher than 44 gallons a minute. I think we ought to back out of this and call it a day. Told you there'd be other systems that might cause some issues. We gotta catch that kind of stuff if we're gonna get where we want to go. See you next time. We'll talk about compressor efficiency. We'll talk about turbine efficiency. And we'll talk about turbine expansion ratio. These are things you might have heard of, but I guarantee you, you've never read them on an instrument like this, or any instrument for that matter. This is what you can do with the Data Monster. Loving it. I've got so much more to go, guys. Stay tuned and subscribe, and you'll have some fun. I know I'm having fun.